So let's talk about the insights in chapter 5 of the Mahatmya of Shiva Purana. This chapter is so full of great content. Really, you should go and watch the video and hear the whole thing first before I talk about it. Because I can't go into every single point, there's just too much. Anyway, now we're catching up with Chin Chanchala <laughs> after her liberation. She's in Shiva Loka and she approaches Uma, Parvati, and asks for a boon. Please uh, redeem my fallen husband. Now, this is such a great thing that a wife even though she's been mistreated and misguided and um, insulted and, you know, so many other things by her husband, she remains uh, faithful to him enough to beg for his redeem, uh, redemption from sin. Now, what is sin, actually? Bad karma. When you do things that are against the scriptures, that are against the Dharma, you get bad karma. Now, dharma is not subject to public opinion. So even though the fashions in the modern age may change, the dharma remains the same eternally. So marriage is advised in every scriptural tradition, in every religious uh, tradition, in every teaching, in every society. Marriage is very much endorsed. Why is that? to restrict the temptation to have unlimited sex with all kinds of different people. Now, unfortunately, in the modern times, marriage has become basically a joke. It's just another temporary relationship. You can always get a divorce and so on. Nobody takes it seriously. And as a result, they lose the benefits of marriage. So the main benefit of marriage is that you don't go to hell. <laughs> you don't get punished by Yamaraj after this life. Now, you may not believe in hell, but let me ask you this. A person who lives only for their senses is basically conditioning their consciousness for an animal birth. So how do you transform human consciousness into animal consciousness so they can take an animal body in the next life? Well, that's what hell is for. Hell is to degrade the consciousness so that, uh, for instance, in the case of Binduga here, he becomes a ghost and he's haunting the mountains. I mean, this is a terrible thing. And it can't be done in human consciousness. So his consciousness had to be degraded by years in hell. That's the only way it can happen. And then later on, after expiation, one can gradually take higher and higher births until coming to the human platform again. So this is a test, this human form of life, to see if you have enough faith, if you have enough wisdom, if you have enough intelligence, really, to follow the scriptures. And if you don't, well, there's punishment. Why does God do this? Well, why does any parent punish their children? It's to bring them to a right understanding, bring them to the right behavior. If the parents don't do that, they spoil the child, they neglect the child, and they do not give a sufficient foundation for a successful life. So they become blameworthy. 
In the same way, if God did not punish people who were sinful, there would be no incentive to become good. People would just do whatever they wanted, regardless, because there are no consequences. So the people today who don't believe in the scriptures, who don't believe in God, just do whatever they like with full confidence, thinking that, well, there's no heaven or hell after death, so I can do whatever and it doesn't really matter. But that's just an imaginary imagination. Uh, that's just speculation. That's just wishful thinking. Actually, the standard of Dharma is eternal. It never changes. So these actions that go against Dharma are definitely punished. But anyway, Chanchala is such a good wife that even after all this and her husband mistreating her and so many things, once she gets salvation, she begs the goddess. Now the mother goddess, why doesn't she go to Shiva? Because <laughs> Shiva is a disciplinarian. Shiva says, you must do this. And if you don't, I'm going to punish you. The mother is much more uh, flexible and accommodating, much more easygoing, much more compassionate. And so when uh, Chanchula goes and begs for the release of her husband from the hellish condition of life, the goddess grants it immediately because she approached with devotion. The devotion is the coin of the spiritual realm. Now, for those who don't believe in the spiritual realm, <laughs> you're foolish because this is upheld in all scriptures. There are many realms that are higher than this earth planet, and we should desire to go to them because that is the actual aim of life. So in those realms, enjoyment is nonstop. It's unobstructed because we become sinless. Why do I have to become sinless to go to a higher realm? Well, if you were God, would you want sociopaths and all kinds of nonsense people coming into your realm? I don't think so. I wouldn't, uh, and I'm just a human being. So God makes sure that the people who come to his realm are pure. And that way, there's no disturbance. There's no problem. Everybody's cool. Huh? There's nobody running around selfishly seeking the results of their lusty desires and all this. So there's no disturbance. Everything is peaceful. It's beautiful. Now, Earth could be this way if people would simply follow the scriptures. But they don't. They have all kinds of other ideas, selfish ideas and desires. And because of that, they ruin their own lives and the lives of the people around them. So then another point, that when the goddess agreed to redeem uh, Chanchala's husband, Binduga, she called for Tumbaru, who is the greatest reciter of Shiva Purana. And I don't know if you've ever seen uh, one of these uh, Sapta Bhagavatams or, or other uh, recitals, for example, of uh, the Ram Leela, where for a few days or a week, people just uh, gather. It's like a festival. There's food and entertainment and dancing in between uh, discourses, very serious and very deep discourses on the scriptures. So Tumbaru made extensive arrangements, and these are going to be described in the next two chapters. Uh, he made extensive arrangements for hearing the Shiva Purana. And then he recited the Shiva Purana, and <laughs> Bindaga was invited <laughs> forcibly to attend. It reminds me of the, uh, the Nectar Makers, huh? that cartoon, where the evil guys don't want to become good. So they have to be forced. Um, I don't want to be happy. I want to be sad. <laughs> so they make them drink the liquid sunshine. 
sunshine makers. And uh, then they become good and they don't want to go back again to being bad because it's so painful. Being sinful is full of suffering. Just think, having so many desires. First of all, having a desire is suffering. A desire is that you want something that you don't have right now. So until you get it, you put yourself under pressure. You put yourself in a position of suffering, isn't it? Oh, I want this so bad. I want this, I want that, I want so many things. This is why adolescents are so miserable. They have so many desires, especially when they get in touch with TV and social media. They have too many desires that they can't fulfill. They're always comparing themselves to others, which is stupid. And they're always desiring so many things they can't have because they're not adults. So they want a car, they want a plane, they want a lover, they want this, they want that, but they can't have it. So they're miserable. That's why there's so many teen suicides and so many uh, neurotic teenagers. So in this way, desire sets us up. Huh? And even if we get what we desire, oh, well, first of all, we try and try, huh? and we fail so many times. <laughs> and this causes suffering. And then, out of desperation, we accept something that isn't exactly what we want, but we convince ourselves that it's good enough, it's close enough. Huh? But then it's not what we want. And there's still this leftover desire that, well, I got this, but it's not really what I wanted. Uh, that's suffering. And then finally, even if we get what we want, it's only temporary. Huh? Money, love, fame, good looks, health, whatever is temporary. Every endeavor in this human life is ultimately going to fail. Because death is coming. If not today, maybe tomorrow or next week or next year, we don't know. It can happen anytime. So the secret of a happy life is letting go of all desires. Except the desire for Shiva's association. Because that can be had immediately. Just by chanting, Aum Namah Shivaya. It's so simple. It's so easy. It's direct. Shiva is there in his name. That's the meaning of a mantra, a holy name. So when we chant this Aum Namah Shivaya, immediately Shiva is there and we can feel this. We can feel his presence. Just like when we chant any mantra of God or Goddess. We can feel their presence. So in this way, we become happy without having to go chasing after so many material things that only give partial happiness at best and also set us up for a whole lot of suffering, especially when they go away. Huh? That new Ferrari, you know, that has all these problems and has to be in the shop all the time. <laughs> Or maybe you step on the gas a little too much and lose control and wreck the damn thing. So <laughs> it's always a problem in material life. And the greater the desire, the greater the suffering. Look at these politicians and other rascals who want great wealth or great power. I mean, they're suffering like anything. And so they set up a whole industrial enterprise and media enterprise to convince us that we should want these same things so that we can take on so many desires and be just as miserable as they are. <laughs> Don't fall for it. Don't go into the trap. Rather, take shelter of the scriptures. Take shelter of the mantra. Take shelter of puja and hearing the holy name and the, the scriptures from people who have realized them. This will counteract all the poison of Kali Yuga. 
Yes, you have to withdraw from society. You will, because you'll lose your taste for all this nonsense going on in the world. So just be calm and peaceful. Read the Shastra, chant the mantra, live the life of, of sattvic goodness, huh? peace and calm, purity. And in that way, you can actually enjoy much better than if you go chasing desires because the things that you need will come to you automatically by your good karma. That's the key to a holy and peaceful, happy life. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.